Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of my Instagram live question and answer session from Monday the 31st of October. If you're new to watching my channel in these videos, every week I share a live sewing and dressmaking themed question and answer session that I hold on the Instagram platform where people send in questions beforehand and then I share lots of my sewing tips and knowledge and give you lots of inspiring ideas ideas with pattern and fabric recommendations. So if you are watching this video on YouTube then and you've got any questions that you want me to answer or fabrics that you want me to show you then please do leave a comment on this video and give it a thumbs up as well. In this week's video I'm going to be sharing some really useful tips with you and talking about one of my favourite sewing tools, the hot hammer, and then I've also got lots of patterns and fabrics out to show you as well so should be lots of inspiring treats in store. All of the fabrics are available to shop in my online shop and I'll put a link to that in the description to the video. You'll see me reading out the comments that people are saying during the live so that'll just give you a bit of a context to what I'm saying but what I've also done is added timestamp chapters to this video which means that I've put in the time that I answer all the different questions so if you are watching this video back and you ask me a question you can check to see what time I answer your question or if you're just looking for a bit more of a summary of things that I cover in the video then you can check out that as well they're all listed in the description to the video if you hover along the time bar then you'll see them there as well but I'm going to switch to the live recording now I hope you enjoy it if you haven't subscribed to my channel already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video and i'll see you soon hi everyone hello 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 it's nice to see you all hi 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 oh we're all having a nice monday it's pretty wet and miserable out here now i mean i think you know it's officially officially dark and wet outside um, I also want to say <laughs> before we get started is that the rain is quite heavy and there keeps being these like really loud rain showers and then it's like echoing off the skylight in the back of the shop and it sounds so loud so you might hear that it's starting to do it right now so if you hear like this buzzing in the background it's probably just the rain hammering off the skylight in the back there is also more background noise they have these four-way traffic lights at the moment on like the roads outside the shop so there's basically just like a traffic jam all day and all night and there's some quite interesting music getting played from the people who are stuck in the traffic outside like it literally sounds like there's music in here it's so loud so I don't know if you can also maybe hear that as well and um, so yeah it's all happening and then of course the usual sirens so um Hopefully you can hear me over all of this background noise that is happening tonight, but it's really nice to see you all. Happy Halloween for those of you that like Halloween. And yeah, I hope you've all had a nice weekend. So we had um, the Sew Brum sewing me up here at the weekend, which was really nice. And it was so lovely to like see so many people in the shop and also people who um, watch the videos as well. So if you watch the video and you came on Saturday, hi, it was really nice to see you. Um, and yeah, it was just a really nice, felt like a really nice, normal, busy day in the shop. And it was just so nice that this, it was the ninth year of the, the Sobrum meetup. And it was just really nice that it was like kind of busy and back to normal again after it's just being all a bit weird um, over the past few years because of this, the restrictions and stuff. Um, so yeah, I have got lots of things to show you tonight, lots of fabrics that are out. Um, as always, ask ask away as I'm chatting and I can answer your questions. Um, I don't have quite as many questions as I normally get asked um, this evening, so I probably have got time to uh, answer more questions um, off the cuff tonight, so please ask away. The easiest questions for me to answer when I've not had time to prepare for them is um, ones that are about sewing tips or like things that you're stuck with or maybe like you're like making a project, you're getting stuck at a certain stage or you wanna know how to like do a technique or you're just, yeah, you're kind of like stuck with something. Um, the ones where you, want, where you want pattern or fabric recommendations, I can answer them better if I know what they are in advance. So, I mean, I can give it a shot, like, please ask, but um, it might be that if I don't know the answer, like off the top of my head, then I just try and remember the question or you can send me the question separately and then I'll answer it next week. Um, but I have, I've got quite a lot of questions that are about recommendations for fabrics and patterns anyway tonight. So I've got lots of things to show you. Anyway, 
Um, but yeah, please do ask away. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube later, then feel free to ask away in there as well. Um, I Okay, somebody's saying, I made that top and I love it. What can I make next? Yes, yeah, so I often get asked about what I'm wearing. So I'll cover that now. Thank you. Um, so this is the True Bias um, Nico top, which is this one here. Um, which comes with quite a lot of variations as they normally do so I've got the top version with the long sleeves but you can make dress as well you can make a sleeveless version and we did this as a kit um I, th I think it was last year I start to lose track um and it's made out of a stretchy like a rib gray rib knit fabric so I don't we don't have this exact fabric anymore we got it especially for the kit so um yeah, I don't have that one to show you, but I do have two that are very similar that would also be also, also be suitable for that pattern. So I have got this one here, which as you can see is a bit of a darker grey, but it's still got the rib. It's actually a variated, very, very, variated rib, variated. Um, so some of the ribs are thicker than others. It's really nice. It's a little bit heavier than the one I'm wearing as well. But as you can see, it's got loads of nice stretch. So it's perfect for a fitted style like this. This fabric is the mid grey variated rib knit fabric. It's 1930 a meter and it's a viscose polyester mix and it does come in other colorways as well. So we've got a maroon and a navy and I think a black as well. Um, so yeah, that's a really nice one there. You could use this to make cardigans as well. And then the other one that I've got that is very similar to this, this one's probably more similar in color, is this one here. Um, it's like virtually exactly the same color, but it is a different fabric. Um, and it's a nice stretchy rib one as well. And this one is the soft gray rib knit blended fabric. And it is also polyester and viscose mix and it's 1660 a meter. So it's a little bit lighter weight than that other rib one. Um, and, but yeah, it's still nice and stretchy, would still be good for this top. Um, and then we, you can get the top tips video that I released with this um, kit as well. If you've not worked with rib before, then it's probably worth thinking about getting the video or maybe just having like a little read around working with with ribbed fabric because the fact that it's so stretchy can sort of affect things a little bit um okay somebody else is asking what is your skirt or trousers it's a skirt that i'm wearing this was also a kit it was actually the same month and um, this is the tilly and the buttons bobby pinafer but it all, but you can also make it as a skirt version so it's got um a button down front and then it's got nice kind of patch pockets you can add pockets on the back as well and um, and it is made out of a stretch cord fabric this is a sort of petrolly colorway which we don't have any in stock of at the moment but we do have some navy and we've got like a kind of olive -y green color as well sort of dark green and um, and we should have more of the other colorways coming in stock we did have a red like a cherry red and then this petrol color too but yeah it's really it's really comfy it's actually quite stretchy and um, which makes it super comfy um, so yeah, that is my skirt. Um, and then the other things that I wanted to show you, actually, I might just catch up with these questions just now because quite a lot of people have been asking things. Um, is there any update on the retreat? I'm sorry, there's not. Um, one day when it is all ready, I will be able to tell you the long story of the retreat. Um, but I'm afraid I don't have any more information to share with you right now. Um, okay, let's see what else have I been asked here. Hello from Southwell Sewing Shed. Hi. Cutting out a Christmas cuff dress from the assembly line. One of my faves. This is the fifth version. Excellent. Bought your sneaker kit. Is there a next release or where I can get the soles? So you can, there probably are other places in the UK that stock them. We're not getting them again, unfortunately. Um, or you can get them directly from the sneaker kit website. Um, but it'll, it'll ship from Europe. That's the, the companies in the Netherlands. Um, what is the best way to get, best way to great good clean edges on a wool coat make? You need a wooden clapper. We sell them. We had them specially made locally um, from really nice sustainable beech wood. Um, you need a clapper. And I do have a video on how to use that as well on my YouTube channel. Can you show the drape of the black bamboo jersey? Hmm, it's, qu it's quite far away at the moment. I'll see if I've got time later. Um, making Friday Pattern Company 
Adriana dress and struggling with inserting the sleeve. Any recommendations to help? Remind me what the sleeve is like on that one. Is it gathered? Um, just help me picture it a little bit more. Um, hello, most of the patterns I make for daughter, the shoulders are always too wide and hang off her shoulder. I'm not sure what adjustment to make. Any help, please? Um, I suppose there's a few things that could be going on, could be going on there. Um, so, as you, how old is your daughter? Like, as in, is she an adult or is she a child? That'll help me like narrow things down a little bit. Tell me that first, and then I'll go go into more detail. I've ordered linear sequin mesh to make an unlined top. How should I finish the seam allowance and will bias binding on the neckline work or should I draft a facing? I would probably just do binding on the neckline. Um because I think if you're if you're making it unlined, I think you just want to make the neckline a bit cleaner. So I would probably stitch bias binding on but then hand stitch it down and like sort of catch it onto the mesh. Um, in terms of the seam allowances, you could bind them as well. Um, otherwise, you could just leave them. Um, the sequins shouldn't fall off. Um, where did you get your necklace? I love it. I should have tried to remember the name of the place. It's like a, per a person that I found at a, at a like a you know like a, a handmade market. And I've got loads of her necklaces. Oh, I can't even remember her name. I'm sorry. I'll put it in the description to my YouTube video. I'm sorry. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, thank you for reminding me about the clapper. My next project is a wool hovia. Yeah, it make, makes a huge difference using a clapper. Yeah, sleeve is gathered and I need to insert between facing and the dress. Can't get my head around it. Hmm, interesting. So do you... Do you... I would probably like, I've not made that one before. If you'd insert it between the facing and the dress, then I would probably just like push the facing out of the way and like get it attached on to the dress and then attach the facing on later. Either like, you could even just like press the seam out as the facing like attached to the sleeve head. You could even just like press the seam allowance of the facing back and then hand stitch it on if it's like too hard to sort of bag it out or you can't get your head around that bit. Um, but otherwise you just need to make sure that you've got easing stitches in the sleeve head within the seam allowance and just a little bit more than the sleeve allowance as well because it means that the, the fabric gets gathered more evenly and then you end up kind of like sewing in between where your where your gathering stitches are where your easing stitches are and it's easy to control easier to control those gathers make sure you put your pins in at 90 degrees as well it's a more precise way to pin um, when you're pinning in a shoulder seam um, fabric for the Cali shirt. I love the Cali shirt. It's actually really versatile because you can use loads of different types of fabric. I've seen really nice versions in double gauze. I've made some out of a more kind of medium weight um, cotton before, which works well. You could use a cotton lawn. Um, you could you could even, depending on your skill level, you could even use a viscose fabric as well, which would be nice because it's quite boxy and loose. So if you use the viscose fabric, it'd kind of drape and move a little bit more. Um, thank you. My daughter is two, but she's quite tiny, so I normally size down, but the shoulders are still very big. Um, maybe, maybe you need to, maybe you need to size down even more, but then just make things longer. Because I guess if you go quite small, then you know they might be, you know, she, she might be petite but tall. My my I, my daughter's quite tall for her age, so I usually have to make things like you know, one size for this dimension and then another size like for this to add length onto it. It might just be that you need to, to, to size down a little bit more um, for that. Also, what what kind of fabrics are you using? Are you using stretch or woven to make things for her? Um, okay, for the Davenport dress, the main seam allowance is three eighths, but gathering stitches ask for two rows, a quarter of an inch and then another at a quarter of an inch. Is it assumed you need to unpick gathering stitches as the second row will be visible? Okay, I think maybe a typo's happened in where 
where you've written in where to do the other one, yeah, you just take them out afterwards. And they should be really easy to pull out gathering stitches because if you use a long stitch length on your machine, like up to five millimeters, and just use, a, it can help if you use a different color of thread and the bobbin as well, because then it's easier to separate the threads out, you know, what side you're pulling. And then once you've got it sewn in, you can, if it's a long stitch length, you'll literally just be able to pull that thread out and then it'll just all come out. You don't have to actually unpick it. You can just pull the threads out. Um, C Pink Studio. No, I do have other necklaces from C Pink Studio, but this one is not. Oh, it's, I can, I can pick. Nadge, I think her name is. Na oh, it'll come to. It's coming to me. Um, is your polo neck me made? It is. Yes, I covered it that in the beginning. What it is? It's the True Bias Miko, um, top. Um, okay, maybe I'll try in stages, thanks. Okay, that's maybe to do with the sleeve. If I remember, it has elastic across the top of the shoulder on the Adriana. Um, oh, I was thinking that it was the other. They've got, they've got, they've got a pattern that's called Adriana and then another one that's called Adrian. I always get the two mixed up. But yeah, one of them does have, it's just like a casing that you make and then you put elastic in it. It doesn't have a facing, that one. Um, Friday Pattern Company have good sew-alongs. may have sleeve insertion help. That's true. They do have a lot of sew-alongs. Um, I've bought the copper sequin fabric. Would this be suitable for a, for a Celio top? If not, any other recommendations? Yes, it would be. I've made that top in, in a very similar sequin fabric to that before and it was fine. Um, you fold the facing down over the wing side of the sleeve. Good to know, thank you. Mainly jersey dresses for my daughter. I have sized down more, but then the neckline is too small for her head to get through, bless her. Um, I wonder, then maybe you just need to size down, but then cut the, cut the neckline opening bigger. The other thing that I've also done when my daughter was much younger, and I used to make her dresses was I would just, because some, some kids patterns, you know, they have like the little shoulder, it's like a little shoulder thing with poppers so that it makes it easier to take stuff on and off. So it could be that you just, you just size down, but then you add that. I've added it at the back before, which is a wee bit more complicated, but you can just add it at the shoulder seam. You basically just have to like, um, cut out a bit of like a, like a longer shoulder, bit on there like when you cut it out so it means that your bodices are like asymmetrical because it's got a longer bit and then you kind of fold it back on yourself to make a little facing thing or like a kind of placket and then and interface that and then you just sort of overlap them to then make the shoulder seam and put poppers in it um, and some patterns have that anyway so it might be maybe if you've got a pattern that's got that you could kind of use the same technique on that one I've done that before as well when my, my kids were younger um Okay, lots of people still joining. Hi, it's lovely to see y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna get on to some of the um, the questions and things that were sent in beforehand now. Um, some people were asking about Sewing Society hints. Yes, it's two days until the next kits are released. And I was sharing some hints last week as well. So um, we've got two kits. I love them both, of course, as always. And one of them is just so super useful. You're literally just, it's something that is like a real core piece of a handmade wardrobe that you'll just be able to make loads and loads of versions of. You'll be able to wear it with everything. It's like a really useful thing to have um, and a really like nice, luxurious version of it as well. It's not a bra though. And um, some people have been getting a bra, it's not a bra. It's, it's easier to sew than a bra. Um, and then the other one is, um, really like cool fabric choice. I've got four different colors of that one. I've had lots of samples to make and it is like two in one. So there's like two garments in one kit. I'm going to leave it there because you've not got long to wait anyway. So make sure you've signed up to our newsletter so that you get first access to buy the kits. I've been finding it really hard this year to get the numbers right on the kits, to like work out how many to make. And I've been like really trying to increase the numbers so that I don't, you know, everybody can get one that wants to get one. Um, but getting the balance right is really hard. Um, and yeah, 
basically I ended up having to put a little bit more fabric in one of the kits than I had originally thought I would, which means I've been able to make, I've only been able to make less than I originally planned. So there's not as many um, of the kits this month. So I'm going to see how it goes. But if you, if you want one, make sure you're signed up to the letter and you get the newsletter and you get in there. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to just let you know about is that last week I was showing you lots of woolen fabrics that were suitable for making trousers. So they were sort of lighter weight wool fabrics that kind of had like a bit more sort of floppiness to them. And lots of people were asking me, can you wash them? So I have done a test wash on like, I think maybe like, I don't know, six or seven different um, wool fabrics. And I am currently just putting the finishing touches to a blog post that is all about fabrics for making like autumn winter trousers and I'm going to cover all the wool fabrics and then just generally other fabrics that you would want to you might want to use to make trousers at this time of year and um, so I will share the results in there and just generally my thoughts on washing wool as well and um, but the, the headline is most of them were fine there's there's one that's like a kind of waffle weave that's got a sort of looser texture and it kind of shrunk a bit but the rest were generally fine on a wool cycle and um, so all being well that should be out later in the week that that it also will be a blog post and a video that's about um trousers for this time of year um okay the next okay i'm gonna get on to the questions now so somebody said what is your must-have sewing tool and why so aside from like the essentials you know really good pins measuring tape and centimeters and inches scissors you know all of that kind of stuff i tried to think of like more of like a kind of gadget or like an extra thing that I use a lot and it is the hot hammer we these are just amazing and it will change your pressing and ironing life when you dress make once you've got one of these and um, they are quite expensive full disclosure this is 1740 partly because it's the clover brand which is quite an expensive Japanese brand but the quality is excellent and um, and you can also get it in this form as well I don't actually have one of these and um, but you know equally as good and um, this one has a rounded bit for corners as well basically you um use it when you're pressing things and you can kind of measure as you're pressing so it's a bit like a sort of stiff felt thing um but it's got a bit of friction to it so it's quite good if you're pressing slippery fabrics because they'll kind of they won't they don't stick to it but you know it's just got like friction to it when you're pressing and ironing and um, so it makes it really easy to yeah to like press press stuff back um so yeah that is that is that and then the next one was could i line a men's ilford jacket from the mammoth flannel that's like a cotton brushed cotton flannel fabric that we've got with the sherling inside so the sherling fabric is this is like literally bigger than me this roll of fabric this is our sherling fabric here which, which has been so popular it's now back in stock it's 70 percent cotton and 30 percent polyester um, it's nice and wide um, it's 150 wide and it's 20 80 a meter and yeah you could use this to be like a really cozy lining for something I've also used it as a, on a collar for a Thayer jacket that I made you could use it as a hood lining and um, so it's gonna you know it just feels really snuggly and soft and fleecy that's what it looks like on the back and um, so my answer is yes I think you could it is quite chunky so maybe like have a think about size and whether you might need to size up or not just depending on what the finished garment measurements are for the size that you're making in relation to the body measurements for the body you're making it for and then you just need to look at the Friday Pattern Company website. They've got a blog on there with a video that has got lots of tips about how to line an Ilford jacket. And um, this is, I brought a sample of an Ilford jacket over because the way that the placket on the Ilford's created is that it's not a separate bit of fabric, like that front bodice bit just gets folded back on itself to make the placket at the front. So really when you're lining it, you're you're gonna be using the, the you know the, the bodice pieces and the sleeve pieces as your base to cut out your lining, but then you obviously will need to like cut it shorter because you don't wanna be like have all that lining in there. Your lining just needs to come far enough so it's gonna get caught in there. But yeah, that Friday Path and Company blog post is going to give you all the tips that you need for lining an Alford. But in answer to the question, yes, you could definitely line a shearling one with that. It would make a really lovely shacket.
And then the, uh, the next question was, why are invisible zips hard to do up, especially when they cross a seam, e.g. a waistband on a dress? I think it's just to do with how the teeth, the teeth um, interact with like the tape and the pull on the zip really. And it, it will help a lot if you're able to like hold the bottom of the, the zip as you pull it up. So you've kind of got something to pull against. If you're finding it really hard to, to, to get across where the, where the seam is at the, at the waistline, it might just be that you've maybe sewn, sewn it too close to the teeth. Um, you know, sewn the fabric on too close to the teeth, so then the, the pull on the zip is just like struggling to get past it. But you know, when you're going from like one layer of fabric effectively to then going over a seam allowance where there's lots, you know, you will get a little bit of friction there. That's normal. It's not that necessarily anything's wrong. As long as you can get it past it, it's fine. Definitely holding the bottom of the zip when you pull it up will help a lot with that. Um, okay, I'm just gonna see if I haven't missed any other questions here. Um, do, 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 do. lots of people joining hello 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 it's funny because sometimes instagram like lists out all the people that are joining and then sometimes it just says like one name and then like the number of other people that are joined and i don't see who's actually joined okay are you going to get the rust chunky lined corduroy back in stock been sold out for a while so i wanted to know if you'll get it again I need to check. I've got this feeling that we can because I think we tried to order it and we had like a really big delivery from that supplier and it didn't come in. So I think we're just trying to find out if the reason it didn't come in is because it's not available anymore. So potentially not. Um, but if you request a stock notification on the website or just email us to, to ask, then um, we can get that checked out this week because, yeah, I think if we can't get it again, we need to stop teasing people by showing it on the website. Um, okay, I've just joined. Do you have any quilted padded fabric? I want to make the fiber mood Irma body warmer. We do have one, which is a new one. Um, I should have brought that over. Um, I might just sneak over and get that later because I needed to get another fabric for somebody who wanted to see how it drapes. Um, it's in the just arrived section of the website though. It's like a blue sort of padded one. I tried to get more colors and then they weren't available. Um, but yeah, we do have that one, just a little bit of it. Okay, so the recommendation questions were, hi, I've been watching you on your YouTube channel. My question is, I'm looking for fabrics for the Fiber Mood DD and the Elaine pullover top. So these were both, the DD top was like a kind of jumper, but it had like a sort of, I guess, like a yoke section here with a zip. And then the Elaine one was like similar style, but it had just a bit more of a V-neck opening there. Now from the pictures, the modeled pictures on it, they're for stretch fabrics. It looked like they were quite sort of thick, chunky um, fabric. So I've got a couple to show you um, that, that I think would be good for that and would be nice and cozy. The first one is the, the marled fleece back fabric. This comes in lots of colors. And um, this particular one is the Lake Blue. And it's 1660 a meter, it's 95 cotton and 5% elastane. And it's got a really lovely fleecy back, feels a little bit thicker. And yet it's just got a sort of marled kind of color on it. It's not like a solid color, so it's really nice. And we do have lots of colorways of that one as well. So that would be a nice option. And then the other one, which looks really similar to one of the samples that they had made and the photographs of it on the Fibermood website was this one here, which also comes in lots of colors as well. And um, this particular color is the, the garnet. So it's like a kind of ready color. Um, and it's the knit effect fabric, 70 cotton and 30 polyester, it's 2360 a meter. And it's basically like two layers of fabric together. So one side kind of looks like a sort of rib knitted fabric. And then the other side just looks like a jersey fabric. So it feels nice and soft on the inside. Um, so yeah, they would be my top suggestions. You've got lots of color weight options in both of them as well. Um, okay, the next one was, can you recommend a zip up fleece pattern, preferably without a hood? I'm not a fan of hoodies as I don't find them very convenient layering piece for taking on and off. So the Freddy Pattern Company Arlo Track jacket is a good option for that one. That's not got a hood, but it's got, you know, you can still zip it up and it's got, I guess, like a kind of turtleneck collar really. Um, you know, it com comes right up there um, and it's got nice pockets as well. So that's a nice nice one and you could you could use that marled fleece back sweatshirting to make that you could use our cozy colors as well which again comes in lots of different colors this one is the denim one 
Um, so they would both be good for that one, the Arlo track jacket. Um, okay, the next one was, what is the best cotton jersey for a relaxed, lightweight trousers? I previously ordered a jersey medal and I love it, but it's too slinky, i.e. it shows every lump and bump for the trousers. So the reason that it's slinky is because of the medal that's in it. Um, medal, tensile, um, viscose, anything like that in a jersey is going to give you like a much more kind of floppy, fluid jersey that's going to like, you know, swish about and, you know, I guess it, it will cling a little bit more, like depending on what you're making. Um, so it depends whether you want those properties or not, like if you want the lightweight and the swishiness or if you want something that's a bit more structured. So really, you just want something that's like just got cotton and elastane in it so i've not brought a very exciting color over because this was the only one i could find at the time but we do have this fabric and lots of other colors as well it's just like another classic plain fabric it's the basics organic cotton jersey fabric so it's 95 cotton and five percent elastane and this definitely just obviously you can see it still flops but i wouldn't say it like swishes and kind of drapes it does just hold its shape a little bit more um, that, than a medal jersey would so yeah you need something that's cotton but you could also use something that's a little bit heavier this is a french terry loop back so the reverse of it's got lots of like teeny tiny little loops and i would say that this fabric's a bit more of a cross between a t-shirt weight fabric and a, and a fleece back sweatshirting fabric it's not as lightweight as your classic t-shirt fabric it's not as heavy as a fleece back sweatshirt kind of sits somewhere in between, which means that it can be quite versatile for both types of patterns, just depending on how thick you want it to be. But this one is also mostly cotton. Um, it's 65 cotton, it's a bit of polyester, 30 polyester and 5% elastane. And this will definitely just hold its shape and structure a little bit more. So I think that would, that's another option to give you the sort of look that, that I, I think you want um, from your question. The next one is, I would like some recommendations for a dressing gown sewing pattern that is long or can be lengthened down to the ankles and is designed for warm, snuggly fabrics. So a few years ago, we used the named Lahaja pattern to make um, a cotton waffle dressing gown. Um, and it is, it's a unisex pattern. So it's just like basic sizing. It's very oversized. And you can make either like a knee length one or this is the long one here. This was actually the one that I made um, that my husband modeled, which is why it's, um, why it, looks like it does on me. <laughs> um, I actually prefer the knee length one, so I've got that in pink. Um, but the pieces are very rectangular, so I guess you could look at the finished garment measurements for the length, for the size that you're making, and if you wanted to make it longer, it would be really easy to do that, because you could just lengthen it down, because it's just like a rectangle anyway. But yeah, I think that's just a really lovely classic dressing gown pattern. I wear my pink one all the time. Um, so that's my suggestion for that one. And then the next question is autumn top recommendations for a simple and box. Oh, sorry, wait a minute. Autumn top recommendations, simple and boxy in style. So I've got a few patterns here, and then there were some that I didn't have the pattern envelopes for. Um, so this one is the assembly line, and this is the high cuff sweater. So this is actually. Um, designed for woven fabrics but then it's got a rib um, neck band and then you've got ribs for the, you use ribbing or cuffing for the cuffs and the hem band as well and um, so it means that you you know you've got a whole range of different fabrics that you could use for that like you could make it in a nice um, brushed cotton flannel fabric but then you know your neckline would be in a in a contrasting or sort of coordinating ribbing or cuffing so that's a nice simple one and um, the other one is the paper three block tee very simple and quite boxy in style and then my other suggestion was the assembly line puff shirt is quite simple and the paper theory lb pullover and um, there was a lady at, in the shop on saturday who'd made one of them and it looked really nice again it's for woven fabrics but it's quite simple and it's just you know just quite a nice sort of loose fitting simple simple top um, okay the next one was what fabric can I use for the new closet court next dress oh my goodness I absolutely love this pattern so much like I've been dreaming about it you know when something just plays on your mind a lot I love 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 that pattern um, 
I think we might have sold out of it because I couldn't find the pattern envelope to show you. But it's got a top and a dress version. And I actually think you get quite a lot of options in the pattern because it's got one where it's just like a center front seam and kind of like, you know, just like plain sleeves. I've got a bit of a puff at the bottom or else it's like a little sort of blouse with buttons in the gathered section. You have a dress with lots of um, gathered tiers. So my top picks for that one are this this one which is one of the fabric godmother ones it's the jude black viscose 12 fabric and it's 16 pounds a meter and um, because it's a viscose 12 it just feels a little bit thicker i think these colors are really nice for this time of year as well and um, the reason i picked it is because the pattern is quite abstract you can't really see any like lines or columns in it you wouldn't need to worry about where you were cutting this out and i think having a pattern where the scale of it or like the the design of it is is quite sort of random and abstract is going to be good because especially if you're making the dress that because it's got three tiers and the skirt and then you've got you know like you've got buttons at the front and everything then I don't think you want something that's going to get chopped up that would look funny if it was chopped up too much or else you would end up having to do quite a lot of kind of pattern matching or pattern orientation so yeah something that is a bit more abstract is going to be good for the next pattern so that is that is one of my choices there um but the the other one that would be good as well i actually brought this over to answer another question um but this would be good too and it comes in another colorway like a sort of khaki green colorway this is the steel gray animal print viscose 12 fabric and it's 1360 a meter um, and it's just a nice little sort of small scale kind of animal print and again, you, you know, you definitely wouldn't need to be worrying about pattern matching or placement or anything like that with that one. Um, okay, the next question was winter fabric for a wide leg trouser pattern, please. So I am going to be, as if, you, if you've if you joined recently, I was saying at the beginning, I am going to be sharing a blog post and a video this week that is all about different trouser fabric um for making autumn winter trousers but i've got a few over here that i can show you anyway this is the flint gray wool cashmere blended fabric and it's quite quite thin and lightweight so i think this would be nice for a wide leg trouser because it's going to sort of float and swish around a little bit it won't sort of be too stiff or kind of hold its structure too much so that's a nice option there but yeah i'm because i'm going to go into a lot more detail in my trouser video coming up I, i'm i'm going to leave it there for, in answering that question and um, okay the next one was i am still summer sewing for holidays lucky you that sounds lovely any rib jersey suitable for the lola tank top this is like a sort of kind of like a racer style top where it's you know the the kind of curves in like that quite a high neckline and um, annoyingly i forgot to bring it over but we do have some of the meat milk De um derby tensile rib jersey which is really nice for that one um okay the next one was recommendation for the tilly and the buttons coco for a very nervous first time stretch so first of all don't be nervous about sewing stretch it's really not that scary um, well, maybe it's scary like the first time, but it's, there's no need to be scared. It's going to be fine. It's not going to be as scary as you think. Um, and once you've done it, you'll be like, whoa. Um, so the, the Tilly and the Buttons Coco recommends a double knit or a ponty roam or something that's a little bit more structured. Um, we don't sell a huge a lot of Ponte Roma because it's usually mo just polyester. Like a lot of the Ponte Romas are like 100% polyester. And also they tend to be like quite kind of dark. I find it's really weird, like especially the pattern ones, they all seem to be like grey or like really dark in colour. Um, so, but we do have one that's a stripe. So this is this is like the exact type of fabric that they recommend for the pattern. So this is a Ponte Ro a striped Ponte Roma, but it also comes in like a light grey and a white stripe as well. And um, so this is I'll read out the proper name for you: navy and white stripe Ponte Roma fabric, and it's eleven eighty a meter. But this one's a viscose polyester mix, so it's forty five viscose, fifty polyester, and five percent elastane. And um, but I was trying to think of like other things that you could use to make the cocoa because it says it's not supposed to have too much stretch really. Um, you could use this one, but I don't know, maybe for a first time because it's got that rib 
on it, it might sort of scare you even more. It shouldn't do, but I think that, but I think that would also work for the, for the cocoa. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's, there's loads of videos and help and everything out there for sewing with stretch. So my main advice to you is please don't be scared. Okay, the next one is, can you recommend a top pattern for a faux Angora knit fabric, please? Um, I wasn't totally sure what a faux Angora knit fabric was like, but um, I was think I was presuming it's obviously stretchy because it's a knit. Um, and then I think the Tilly and the Buttons Billy is quite a classic. It's got quite a high crew neck on it. Um, and it's just like a really simple sweater pattern, which is really nice. So I think, I think that would be my top pick for that one. Okay, the next one was looking for a bold patterned needle cord. Do you have anything? So we do have this one here, which I would say is pretty bold. Um, and this is a nice needle cord. It's 100% cotton and it is the teal retro circle cotton needle cord fabric and it's 1860 a meter. And it does come in another colorway, which is more like kind of warmer tones. I can't remember exactly. I think it's got like pinks and maroons and maybe purples in it. And we're out of stock of that one at the moment, but we, we are ordering more. So you can request a stock notification for that on the website. Um, but yeah, this would be my answer for this one. It's quite it's quite lightweight um, and it doesn't have stretch because it's 100% cotton, but yeah, it's really nice. The colors in it are beautiful. So it's sort of navy background, then these all these sort of colorful splodges. Somebody's saying the cocoa is a lovely sew. It is. Um, okay, somebody was also asking, can you wash the flint? That's the flint gray one. So it didn't come with any official washing instructions from the supplier, but I did do like a test wash of quite a lot of the wool fabrics that we've got. Um, and I'm gonna share the details of that in my video, my trouser making video, but I washed it on a cool wool cycle in the machine and it seemed to be fine. So yeah, I would say, I would, I, I, I probably wouldn't, I feel like a bit nervous about saying, just go off what I've done. Like I feel like I would maybe still want you and recommend you to do a little test wash in your machine with, you know, the detergent you use and the water that's in your part of the country and your washing machine. But I think it's, I think it seemed okay when I did it. Um, okay, the next question was fabric recommendations for the Zadie jumpsuit for a more seasonal look. So yeah, that was what I brought out this one for, for the Zadie, that would be really nice. Um, a nice print for this time of year and a nice fabric for the ZD because it's nice and nice and floaty and lightweight. And then the other one that I got that's a bit thicker um, for the ZD, but I think it would still look nice because it does still have, you know, it's not it's not too, although it's thicker, it's not stiff. Um, so it does still kind of have like a bit of kind of movement to it. Um, this one is the military blue blended stretch 12 fabric and it's 1050 a meter and it's a viscose polyester mix and we've also got it in an orangey color and then like a dark gray color as well and um, this would be good for wide leg trousers too for the person who was asking about wide leg trousers earlier and um, it's got a really nice sort of defined 12 weave texture on it um, and then the next one was uh, do you have any suitable fabrics that do not contain wool but are thick enough for winter trousers? I'm allergic to wool, but I don't want to have to line the trousers. So this one is an option because it's got viscose polyester in it. The other option that is good for trousers that doesn't have wool in it is this one here, which is the Indigo Bamboo Blended 12 fabric. And it's 49% bamboo and it's 49% recycled polyester and 2% spandex and it also comes in a few colours so we've got like a really nice sort of peacocky petrol blue colour I think we've got like a grey colour as well this is a kind of sort of like a marled denim colour indigo we've called it yeah um, it's 24.50 a metre and it's it's got a really nice thickness but it's still because it's got bamboo in it it's still got quite a bit of floppiness so again, it's gonna be, it's gonna make trousers that are not, you know, they're not gonna be like straight structured trousers, like they're gonna move about really nicely. And um, it would be, this would be nice for the new Closet Core Mitchell trousers as well. It feels so soft, it's a really lovely one. And because it's got, um, it's a mix with polyester, they've, they've also put it on here wrinkle-free. Um, lots of people ask me about creasing of fabrics, but yeah, this one says it's wrinkle-free, which is always a good thing. Um, 
that people seem to be looking for. Okay, the next one, what, wait a minute, so I'm gonna do the questions that are here and then I've got a few more left that were sent in beforehand. Okay, any suggestions for patterns for linen garments for autumn, winter? I have found a gorgeous fabric. Um, I suppose it depends how thick the linen the linen is because you can get quite a lot of variation in that. Like, is it a trouser weight or is it a bit more like a dress or a top? Um, I've just bought that fabric. It's absolutely stunning and soft as butter. Oh, that's good. Um, okay, so the other question that I had sent in beforehand was fabrics for the Heather blazer and then also fabric suggestions for the Jazika blazer needs some texture for the interfacing to adhere to but not sure where to start. So the Heather blazer is a Friday pattern company pattern that's for quite a sort of I would say it's a bit more of like a simple blazer. It's a bit more boxy and straight. The Juzika is definitely a bit more involved and it's got you know, like proper collar and lapels and some like a bit more detailed tailing work to be done, welt pockets. And it's a bit, I think it's a bit more fitted as well, the Juzika blazer. Um, but bo both patterns could use like really similar fabrics. So I've got quite a few wools to show you for that one that are, that are a little bit thicker. These aren't really trouser wools unless you were making trousers that you would line. Um, so I've got this one here, which is the cloud grey wool fabric and it's 100% wool and it's 24.50 a metre. And it's a nice grey colour, but it's sort of marled like a little bit. It's not a solid colour. It's really nice. So Hopefully you can sort of see the texture of that there. It is quite sort of stiff and holds its shape really nicely. And then, so that I would say, so that's that's for either Jazika or the Heather. Um, the, the, all of these ones are. And then there's one at the end that I think is maybe more just for the Heather. Then this one here is the Midnight Herringbone Wool Fabric. It's 22.40 a metre and it's 100% wool. So it's got that sort of herringbone weave in it. So when you look closely, you can kind of see that texture in the weave. And I would say it's got it's got a mix of different colours of fibres here. There's definitely blue in it. There's also black in it and then like a grey as well. So it just has like a really interesting sort of like, yeah, kind of tone and colour to it. So it's, it's another nice one there. And then the next one is also a herringbone one. So this one is the Heather herringbone here. So again, it's got that herringbone texture to it. This is also 24.50 a metre and 100% wool. And you can see it's just got a few different tones in it. So like a sort of lighter kind of pinky purple and then a darker purple as well. Um, suitable for the Ava skirt? Yes, I, these wools would be suitable for the Ava skirt. But I think you would want to line them with like a classic sort of slippery kind of viscose or acetate lining. Um, would that herringbone wool fabric be suitable for a line skirt? Yes, it would. <laughs> yeah. Um, could you make Elford from the Flint and would you need to line it? I'm coming to your question, Nikki. It's the last one in my list. Um, I'll finish showing the blazer once just now and then I'll get to your question. Um, okay, the next one is this one here, which is the Avocado Subtle Grid Wool Fabric. This is such an avocado colour. It's like a perfect description of it. But then can you see it's almost like a kind of check that's woven into it? So it's got a really nice texture to it as well. This is 100% wool as well and it's 24.50 a metre. So that's another one. For all you avocado lovers out there and then the last one that i've got this sort of like thicker wool for the blazers is the duck egg wool mohair fabric so it's 84 wool and it's 60 mohair and it's 26 50 a meter and this is really nice as well it's got a gorgeous texture and almost like a really subtle grid in it as well can you see the kind of lines in that um so yeah, that's another really, really lovely one. This is probably my favourite. I like those sort of softer pastel colours. Um, and then the last one that I've got to show you, which I which I think would maybe be better for the heather because it is a little bit thinner. Um, but I don't know, maybe if you're out there and you've made the Jazika in a, in a fabric that's as, as thin as this, then you might say that it's okay. So this one is the two-tone peacock wool fabric. It's 24.50 a metre and it's 100% wool. And we do also have it in another colourway as well, which is like a sort of a 
kind of darker shade of blue, I think. Um, but this one's got a few different colors of fibers in it as well. So this kind of like tealy, petrol blue color, and then like a darker color too. So it's just really nice, it's not a solid color either. Um, but it is definitely like a little bit thinner. And I'm not sure whether for the Jazika you just need something that's got a bit more structure. Um, but yeah, lots of really lovely wool options there. I think you could make a skirt in this one as well. That would be nice. Um, but all of them, because they're um, because they're sort of like thicker, heavier wools, they probably, you know, I, I would say you wouldn't want to make something that's like directly next to your skin. They are more for making garments that would be lined. Um, I love that duck egg fabric. Would that be suitable for a coat as well? Yes, it would. A lined coat would be, yeah, it would be lovely for that. Really, really nice. Um, okay, so then the last question, um, Nikki, was yours. Can you think of some jacket type patterns or shackets that would suit the flint grey? Do you think I could do an unlined Ilford or do you think it would want lining in case it's itchy next to the skin or in case it can't be machine washed? So this is the flint grey fabric here. And I'm going to be honest, I think it's a bit too thin to make a jacket with. It's more of like a, more like a trouser sort of suiting weight of fabric. I think if you made a flint with it, it wouldn't, uh, I think if you made an Ilford with it, it wouldn't really feel like a coat or a jacket. It would feel more like a kind of floppy shirt, really, that was made out of wool fabric. Um, so I don't think this isn't suitable for like a blazer either really. I think it's too thin. Um, so, so yeah, but it, it does feel soft. Like I think you could, obviously if you're like got an allergy to wool or something, then no, but I think it feels soft enough to be directly next to your skin. And if you were making trousers with this, I don't think you would need to line it. Um, and this is one of the ones that I did like a test wash of in my machine with a cold wool cycle and it looked totally fine to me after I'd washed it um but yeah I'll, I'm in my trouser video that I'm going to share this week I'll share all the results of all the all the wool fabrics that we have in in the shop that I washed but generally you're going to find that a lot of wool fabrics will just say dry clean um because that's going to be like the safest way for like something not to happen to them the shrinkage to happen because when wool gets wet and hot and soapy all the fibers sort of like fell and bond together. That agitation of washing it can make them kind of shrink together and contract and just fell. And that's where you get shrinkage and change in the texture of it. Um, so, so generally like wool fabrics really can't be washed, um, but, but so, sometimes they can. You just kind of have to test it out. Most of the most of the wool fabrics, I would say like 99% of the wool fabrics that we get in from the suppliers that we have don't have official washing instructions that come with them. Um, so then it's a case of like using your own judgment or like doing a little test wash and we get so many fabrics coming in through the shop. Like I literally can't, I can't test wash every fabric that we get. Um, but I know a lot of people were asking about the wool. So then I did do like a little test wash with some of the wools just to see what they would be like. And this was like, just kind of curious myself as well. But yeah, I'll, I'll go through it and I'll go through it in more detail in my trouser video later in the week so that you can see what they look like when they're washed. But generally I would recommend that if you do get a wool fabric and you really feel the need that you want to put it in the washing machine to wash it, that you just like do a little test wash. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like reading around it a little bit um, when I was when I was like test washing it and sort of putting together the blog post. And I found a thing that said that actually wool natu naturally repels the oils from our skin anyway. And the, so it just the, like the oils and stuff that get released from our skin when we wear our clothes um, doesn't really penetrate the wool fabric as much. Like it kind of just sits on the surface or like it just stays on our skin or like it just sort of breaks down, falls off. So it means that wool fabrics naturally just don't get smelly like other fabrics do because other fabrics will kind of like take the, take the oils into the in, into them from our skin and then it's those oils that then like get a bit stinky over time and then that's why I feel like you want to wash the clothes so really and let you know you there shouldn't be like a huge need to wash woolen fabrics especially if they're 100% wool 
and you can just like air them or if you do feel like they're smelly sometimes people put them in the freezer and that can kill any like surface bacteria that's on it that might be causing like smells or odors um, and if they've got like a visible stain on it just like spot cleaning it gently and um, to, to get that out is probably like the best option um, so yeah that is my little, that's my little spiel about wool fabric. So hopefully you find that useful. Um, but thank you so much for watching everyone. If you are just joining now, um, don't worry, you're not totally missed out because I'm going to be saving this video to my YouTube channel anyway, and I'm going to put all the times of all the questions that I answer um, and all the different sort of topics and things that I cover. I've shared lots of things tonight, lots of different fabrics and pattern and fabric recommendations. If anybody does have any last minute questions, do let me know now before I go. Um, I am just gonna nip over to another part of the shop to bring over two fabrics that people were asking about earlier. Um, so that will give you a little minute to type your question before I finish. Um, so hold that thought. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. Um, so, I think somebody wanted to see, I'm sure I'm sure this was the one that they were asking for, somebody wanted to see the drape of the bamboo cotton jersey. So this is 68% bamboo, it's 28% cotton. This is specifically the deep lake colourway, it's 1340 a metre, but it does come in other colourways as well. Um, the bamboo does make it like a bit more drapey and floaty, but then the cotton will add some structure. Um, so hopefully that gives you sort of idea if I swish that around, mush it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's the bamboo jersey. And then the other one that somebody was asking for was a pre-quilted fabric. We have managed to get one bolt of this one. It's just like a tiny little bit and I tried to get it in more colours, but they didn't have them available. Um, so this one is the Legion Blue quilted fabric. It's 1880 a metre and it is 100% polyester. So I just, it kind of rolled itself off the boat. There, yeah, got to the end. Um, so it's almost like it's pre-lined, um, basically. And yeah, it's just like a kind of puffy, puffy quilted jacket. So good for the Hovia, or it's good for, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a, a their fiber mid one that's in their new magazine. It's on the cover of it. It's good for that one as well. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Right, I'm gonna answer these last few questions that have been put up here and then we'll call it a night. Okay, thank you, thank you for your thanks. Thank you, Fab, as always. I just wanna buy all the fabrics. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, looking for a pattern for pull-up trousers, Japanese style. Um, hmm, I'll answer that one next week. I'll see if I can find a good suggestion for you. Um, would the glitter spot double gauze be okay for a wintry dress? The colours are so lovely. Yeah, I think it would be. Are you still saving the lives to Instagram? I couldn't find last week's. Yeah, I didn't. I've, I'm not saving them to Instagram anymore because it's just so much better when you watch it on YouTube um, because you can like pause it and it's easier to come back to and it gives you more places you can watch it as well because you can watch it on your on your computer too. So they will just be on YouTube. It takes quite a while for them to upload because my internet speed is pretty rubbish. Um, so it will be the recording will be up tomorrow on my YouTube channel at some point. And then you'll also be able to see all the times when I answer all the different questions on there as well. So if you want to watch back, then you can do it on Instagram, on YouTube, sorry. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, everyone. It's lovely to see you all. Don't forget to send me your questions for next week. If you've got any, I'll add them to my list. Um, I'll put a little question box up anyway next weekend. I, I feel like maybe Instagram's just not doing that thing where it's just like not showing people stories. So then I'm wondering whether that's maybe why I'm not, I'm not getting as many questions sent in beforehand. But thank you everybody who did send questions in. Um, you, I'm here for you guys and it's you guys that make the content for the videos because you ask me lots of good questions so please keep them coming and I'll share all of the answers with you all and show you lots of nice fabrics so I hope you have a good week I hope you get time to do lots of nice sewing and I'll see you see you next week bye